Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Season 8, Episode 6, Wham Bam Thinky Ma'am. This episode opens at Vanderpump Dogs. I know I'm being really picky here, but the outside of that building looks kind of trashy that Pepto-Bismol pink and I know that's Vanderpump's signature color but it looks like somebody painted it in a rush and on a low budget. Anyway that is the least of Lisa's worries right now because apparently she's got a lawsuit on her hands. Yeah. She walks into Vanderpump Dogs and she's met by her associates and they all have like these big executive titles and they all look like they're about 16. These two new puppies came in and she's just fawning over them and they're adorable. They're about this big and they're just so cute. And then Ken comes down with one of them and then he, he has the puppy inside his open shirt and I, can only assume that it's, you know, the puppy feels safe, maybe warm, maybe next to feeling his heartbeat or something like that. I'm sure it's all for very good reasons. There is this scene where the puppy has fallen asleep in Ken's shirt. And I cannot figure out for the life of me how that can be simultaneously the most adorable thing I've ever seen in my life and super creepy. Yeah, I don't know if it's because we get to see him like unbuttoning his shirt at first and you don't know what he's going to do. But yeah, it's I just conflicting thoughts is all I can say. We see Teddy get a facial and she's talking to the facialist and telling him that she would like to have a party to thank all the ladies for the birthday celebration in Vegas that they included her on and figuring out what they all might have in common, she decided we all care about our appearance. So she decided to have this sort of spa glam circle thing. We see Kyle on the set of Warner Brothers, which was pretty cool. They were doing some editing for her TV show, American Woman, and we get to actually see a scene of it. And Alicia Silverstone plays Kyle's mother. You see her telling the little girl, when she meets people that she should shake their hand and look them straight in the eye and then they know you're serious or something like that. And Kyle tells the editor, that's exactly what my mom used to say to us. But then she tells us that this is just inspired by her life and not based on her life and that's a huge difference. If that's true, then I don't know why her sisters wouldn't be more supportive. If it's mostly fiction, why would they have a problem with it? That seems a little fishy to me. Then we see Dorit and Erica going shopping for PK's birthday party. Dorit is going to have a surprise party for PK's 50th birthday and they go shopping for cars and they test drive a $3 million Pagani. What? Dorit just had a birthday herself. And for those of you who may not remember, PK's gift to Dorit was arranging to fly Jagger home from Afghanistan. Okay, maybe not, but that's how Dorit acted. By the way, Jagger, thank you for your service. And let me just say, this car was ridiculous. They walk out to the lot and this thing is all opened up like a Swiss army knife. I, I mean, the top's up, the back's up, the sides are up. It's, it looks like it was taken apart. Erica drives first. I don't know how fast Erica is driving, but she's got one hand on the wheel and she looks very calm and comfortable. Dorit has like a death grip on the handle and the seat the entire time. Then it's Dorit's turn to drive. And Dorit said, oh, you're very calm to drive with. And Erica's like, yeah, you're doing fine. You're doing fine, except while she's saying that, she's constantly like reaching over to, I don't know if she's working the turn signal for Dorit or what. It was funny. We have a scene at Lisa Rinna's home with Harry Hamlin. He's got a script in front of him for that Law and Order, the Menendez murders, and he's memorizing his lines. Lisa's talking about 
Delilah, who is going to move to New York City. She's going to work, and then in the spring, she's going to start at NYU. And they're talking about her safety and everything. Harry's a little worried about her being there. And this storyline hits home for me a little bit because my daughter is in college in New York City, and it's a plane ride away for me. I don't like being this far from her and I worry about her in the big city. So I'm relating to this a little too much. And then Lisa said, oh, nothing bad's gonna happen to her because I've got this bubble around the girls, just this protective bubble of light. And Harry's like, oh, well, that makes me feel so much better. So they're laughing about it and Harry said, you should sell that bubble of light because you could sell anything. I wouldn't mind a little bubble of light protecting my daughter. <laughs> Next, okay, we are really promoting Vanderpump dogs, aren't we? Because now we have another scene, not to mention that they show that place on Vanderpump rules too. So Vanderpump dogs is getting a lot of airplay. This time, Kyle has come with Portia and one of Portia's friends, and she's there to have one of her dogs groomed. Only Lisa didn't remember. They go through this whole stupid thing, which is, we know it's a lie. They tell us that they forgot to book her appointment and they're one groomer short, but they have all the supplies, so why don't you just groom your own dog? Yeah. So Kyle's back there with Lisa and Vanderpump is screwing around with the hose and the blow dryer and everything. It, it's really stupid. Plus, I think it's really upsetting the dog. And for Vanderpump, who theoretically cares so much about animals, I would think she would just knock it off because it wasn't that funny. Anyway, she talks a little bit about the lawsuit to Kyle and she seems to have already known that Rinna brought it up at that dinner. And I don't know, she's not horribly upset about it because as she said, it's out there for public consumption, so anybody could have read it. Then we have Teddy's facial spa glam party. Teddy has called Dorit and asked her to come early, which I thought was a pretty ballsy move for somebody that was so late. But she asks her to come early so that they can talk about things Teddy's theory is let's just discuss it, get it over with, and then we can have fun at the party. So to Dorit's credit, she does show up early and they go out to the back because everything, the party's happening out in the backyard. And Teddy's meticulously set everything up. She wants all the towels on the beds to be the exact same size and the pillows. And she has gifts for the ladies that are set up nicely. And it all looks very nice. The spa seems to have brought like all their equipment there to do anything, lasering, all kinds of stuff. They've got like all the stations set up out in the backyard by the pool and it's very lovely. So she asks Dorit if she wants a drink and Dorit gets Vanderpump Rosé and then something really horrible happens. And I hope you guys are sitting down for this and I feel very awkward being the one to tell you, but. Dorit's wine was served to her in a champagne glass. It's true. It was horrible. And I don't know that Dorit can get over it. In fact, I know Dorit can't get over it. Because even after they have their talk, which did not go well, because Dory didn't apologize for anything. She basically told Teddy she was overreacting, but they just kind of ended that conversation. And then Rinna shows up and Dorit asks, could you please give me a wine glass for this? Cause I really feel like I should be drinking it out of a wine glass. Okay. If Dorit can tell me the science behind why she needs a wine glass to drink her wine, then maybe I will cut her some slack. Otherwise, shut up. And let the record show that this is the second time that Miss Manners was a rude guest in someone's home. Let's not forget her complaining about the heat at Kyle's house, like Kyle really wanted her power to go out. And now this, and Rinna, she's telling Rinna, and Rinna's like, yeah, I think maybe I would want that too. No, no, Rinna, stop it. Don't be ridiculous. I get that she's still trying to like make up with Dorit, but don't give her this one, please. 
Then Dorit tells them that she's planning the surprise party for PK's 50th birthday. And when she mentions that it's black tie, Rena actually squeals with delight. Ah, black tie! I love it! I love black tie! There's a picture of the three of them and Teddy is laughing. And trust me, Teddy is not laughing with you, Rinna. She's laughing at you. Then Lisa's like, oh my God, it is going to be like black tie. Oh, wow. Somebody opened up her little baggie of pills before coming. Okay, LVP arrives and she kind of calls out Rena a little bit about the lawsuit thing, but not too much. It really doesn't go anywhere. I'm sure she doesn't love that she had to share it, but if she were to be honest with herself, that's exactly what she would have done. <laughs> if she heard a story about Harry Hamlin like that, you know Vanderpump would be bringing that story to the ladies. So I think she kind of is like, well, I don't blame her. Then Kyle and Erica show up. Kyle is in silk pajamas. So is this a thing? Remember the pajamas that Dorit was wearing in Las Vegas? I guess it's kind of a thing now. Perhaps the next time you tune into Jill Informed, I will be sitting here in silk pajamas. I don't know, maybe. I am not one to pass up a trend. <laughs> then Dorit grabs Kyle to rehash late gate which is a term that I'm stealing from one of my subscribers. I don't know, maybe it's maybe other people are talking about it out there, but I first heard it from Annie and I'm stealing it. So yes, they're rehashing late gate. And when she confronts Teddy again, Kyle didn't say I said six minutes. And but, oh my God, Teddy said, okay, let's drop it. And Dorit goes, okay, let's. And then to the confession cam, Dorit goes, oh, finally, she's going to let it go. Um, no, Dorit, that was you who kept bringing it up and keeping it alive. Finally, Camille arrives and everybody starts to get massages and they're chit-chatting and talking. And Dorit decides to go over to Camille while she's laying down getting a massage to apologize to her for the see you next Tuesday comment. Great timing, Dorit. So Camille sits up and she tells her that she was sorry, she said that. And Camille's like, yeah, I mean, the C word was a little much. And then when you asked me to get my strap on and she's like, what? I, like, I have no memory of any of this. But it, but it was just a joke. How do you know if you said it like a joke? You don't even remember saying it. To the confession cam, Dorit says, okay, well, this concludes my apology to her. Uh, pretty short tour, Dory, because you only apologize to one person. I don't know if you're counting Teddy in that, but you definitely did not apologize to Teddy. Unless you think calling somebody ridiculous is an apology, but probably not. So that's where we leave the ladies for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Please subscribe to Jill Informed if you haven't already. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to comment down below. I love to hear from you. I love all my subscribers. I love all my viewers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please join me every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Central Time for the next recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Bye-bye.